This video is sponsored by Regin Dojo, which offers training courses for Regin and technical art from veterans of the industry. Head over to Regin Dojo to find more about it. Alright guys, so welcome back. And today we are talking again, again about Baby C++. And what I want to talk about after the initial introduction we had is that I want to show you how the actual node works. So first of all, you know I'm not lying. It's not like there is no magic tricks. The thing is actually running, it's actually doing what you expect. Uh, and then basically my uh, plan is to keep going forward and in the next video to actually show you how I'm parsing the language, how I'm generating the code, this kind of stuff, all right? But that's the first step we're going to see how it actually runs in Maya, right? And we also discuss a little bit uh, what are the limitations and how you can overcome that uh, or work around that. Um, all right. So as you can see, uh, here I have uh, the, the solution that I generate from CMake, so I can generate on Linux as well, it runs on Linux as well, no issues there. Uh, but basically it's a usual Maya plugin, nothing weird here, right? Uh, so those are just the headers coming from, uh, from the library, but we have the LLVM node, right? It's nothing fancy, you can see it here, right? It's just an MPX node. Nothing else. Actually, all this crap, I probably don't need it. Alright, just an MPX node. The only thing I'm doing, I'm including the JIT, right? So we have histons in here of the JIT, where the JIT is the thing that uh, compiles on the fly my code and then he executes it, right? So it's a, it's a normal node. We have a couple of inputs um, and we have the compute. That's the usual stuff. So there is there is no magic. It's just an MPX node there, right? And one thing to note is that we have an, uh, an attribute called code, right? This attribute is going to hold our source code, right? Whatever we type in that widget that we have, when I hit compile, it's going to write the, the code, the source code, into this string attribute, and it's going to uh, trigger the node evaluation. We're going to see what happens, all right? Um, so, ooh, actually, I think I removed an header I needed, so this guy is actually needed here. Here we go. So in the initial eyes, you see that I just have two float attributes, the input A and B, that's the one you saw in the video. Then I have code, is of type string, and then I have the output, is a float. Then the compute part uh, is happening here, right? So uh, actually this part is not in there anymore. So first of all, the code is really dirty, right? That was a first pass to, to see if my stuff was working actually. Ooh, I have a bunch of source code I don't need that anymore. I need to clean up this up. But basically, this is the code, right? So it's it's a really quick prototype uh, that I'm going to improve over time. But there are major things I need to do first. But anyway, so we have a boolean there, which is called code is dirty. That's going to trigger every time uh, the code attribute is dirty. So we have the set dependence dirty as usual. It's set a boolean, and then we read that boolean. All right, so if that happens, yes, uh, I'm going to do some uh, C out because why not? And then when I'm going to instantiate the code generator. All right, so the code generator is the class that they wrote that basically it, it grabs source code and spits out intermediate representation, what LLVM likes uh, in order to generate uh, the actual machine code, all right? So we're going to talk a lot more about that later, do not worry. But as you can see, what I'm going to do, I'm going to extract the string from code, and if it's not empty, I'm going to do stuff, right? So I'm going to initialize my code generator with the string, I'm going to parse a function using the parser, and if I get errors, I'm going to print the errors, they're just error handling, it's boring code, we don't need to worry about. Once the parsing has worked, what the parsing does is generate an IST, an abstract syntax, syntax tree, which is basically a representation of your code that knows what is happening. Like, oh, you have a function with that many arguments, the arguments are called this way, they have this name, uh, then you have this statement. It basically describes your code in a generic way, right? Once I have uh, basically the, the root of the syntax tree is this P, and then I'm going to call code gen on it. Code gen is basically the, the code, the function that generates the actual instructions, right? Intermediate representations or LLVM instructions. 
and we are going to go into details of what I'm doing there and so on. Again, if it fails, I'm going to spin out the error. So when you get a compilation error, it's going to spin out what is happening, like, oh, you missed a semicolon and this kind of crap. Um, here, uh, just uh, JIT handling crap, basically. If there was a previous version of the code, I'm going to remove it. Otherwise, I'm going to add my module. The module is just a container that holds all the machine instructions, the intermediate representation stuff I generated, right? So basically, this is nothing more, hey, JIT, this is my intermediate representation that I generated, please compile it. When you do that, and then you ask for the symbol, test function, you might have remembered this, uh, it's going to give you back a symbol, basically, actually, a function pointer that then you cast to whatever you need. If you remember, our, our function was returning a float, grabbing two floats, and then we stored that in custom function, and that's it. If anything fails, uh, we keep it... Um, sorry, if everything went right, we set curt dirty false, and that we have a handle, whatever, right? So the, all this is just initialization. It only runs whenever, basically, uh, you need to recompile. Otherwise, it's not going there, all right? So what is left that was known is just really, really dumb thing. We extract the floats, right? And then I'm going to call custom function, exactly what you expect, passing A and B, and it's going to return a float. I'm going to set that float to whatever it is. If I don't have anything, I'm just setting to one. I don't remember for what reason. Uh, if I don't have a custom function or if the compilation fails, I just set it to one. That's and then I set it to clean. And that's it, guys. That's how the Maya node is running. Right? So you see there is the compilation going on the fly and it gives you back a function. And then you can just call the function. Every time the input change, you evaluate your node, you call the function. And remember, this function at this point, when it gets called, is native code. Right, so it's going to run really fast. Right now, uh, I'm not doing any optimization, so I didn't set up the JIT to do any kind of optimization. So it probably is going to be uh, slower than the actual uh, counterpart in C++, but uh, that's all work I need to do later. So that's the gist of it, right? So it's, it's not that hardcore of a concept. Uh, to be honest, it took me this to write this half an hour, right? So the integration was easy. But it comes with a lot of limitation. Uh, so the main limitation you can see right away is that we can only deal with a function taking in two floats and returning one float. Or basically, we can only have one hard-coded function. Because there is no way, as far as I know, to do this kind of cast, right? Custom type, uh, custom type, B or whatever, something like this, and there is no way to get variable arguments, these kind of things. It's not easy. So, if you want to have multiple arguments or different return types or read different attributes, there is a lot more Maya glue code that you need to write. And that's basically the same thing Fabric did, right? Basically, Splice was the integration. Basically, how do, you, do I make uh, my language uh, and Maya talk, right? So basically, Splice was doing the translation there. And in order to do that, I needed to add a two things to my language. First is pointers. So I need to pass a pointer that I can use from one function. So, and structures. And because what I want to do is the following. This function will become void. So it won't return anything. And what it's going to take is a custom Maya structure, something like this, where custom Maya structure is going to be something on the line, uh, sorry, struct, custom Maya structure, then we have an M object pointer, so this M object, and then M data block pointer, right? Oops, sorry. Uh, block PTR, something like this. Once I have that, basically I can pipe in uh, this information to my language. Now, 
the language doesn't necessarily need to know what these are, right? So rather than be an M object, it can just be a void pointer. Doesn't really matter because my language is not going to use this data, all right? What it's going to do is that I'm going to write some C function, right? Uh, external C, um, then float. Actually, I don't remember. It's, I think it's like this, whatever. Um, float that get Maya attribute float something like this, right? And what I'm going to pass in is the uh, Maya structure. So I'm gonna have to pass it in. So uh, custom Maya structure, Maya struct, and then maybe a string uh, like or sorry a char pointer with a uh, node name. Right, whatever. Sorry, uh, attribute name. And in internally here, what is going to happen is basically this crap we do here, right? For example, uh, I'm going to find uh, some uh, basically the dynamic attributes. Uh, I'm going to find an attribute with this name, with the attribute name. Once I found it, I'm going to extract the data as a float and return it return A, right? So, uh, find uh, Maya attribute by name and by name, something like that, then as float, whatever, right? Something along this line. So you kind of you start to have this Maya glue code um, that does that for you. So, then you need a lot of uh, a lot of stuff like, for example, oh, you added a new, uh, you're asking for an attribute, so add a custom attribute of this type, these kind of things, right? So basically, there is all this lovely Maya glue code to do, uh, which is not bad. I'm going to do it, but in order to do that, I first needed basically pointers, which I already implemented, structure, which I already implemented. Uh, sorry, here basically you pass the, the Maya struct. So you can access the data block, you can access the handle, all this kind of stuff. And so I already have structure. What I cannot do yet from structure, right, is then basically do this, like this M object. I cannot yes, get the reference in this way. Uh, I need to implement that. I'm going to work on that next. And I don't support yet char, right? I will need to either build uh, built-in stream to the language or add a char pointer. Uh, basically, pointer is supported already, but I don't support chars. Uh, just so for the time being, I only support float and int. Or if I want to be lazy, uh, I'm just going to pass an int, uh, say like the index of the attribute. I'm going to have an array of custom uh, attributes or something like that. I know that I want index zero, something like this. Uh, it's not pretty, but we'll get the job done. So it depends how much how much work I want to do, but basically that's how it's going to work, all right? And that's how you overcome this limitation uh, of the hard-coded uh, data type, all right? So this is the gist of it. That's how it's working in Maya and basically my plan for the future. Next videos, we are going to talk a lot more uh, how all this is working, right? Basically going to the details of the parser, all right, uh, the, how I do the Lexi, how I do the code generation, and so on. All right, so that's it for now, guys. Have a nice one.